Hey everyone, this is Elad from Astrolab Diagnostics and today I am recording a very boring video. So I apologize in advance to the listeners. Um, this is going to be pretty dull and I am going to talk about reproducibility in Astrolab. Reproducibility is a repeating issue with uh, cytometry studies, mass cytometry and flow cytometry and it seems to become um, even more acute as the number of dimensions increase. So there is a lot of conversation about how when you do manual gating there is inter-operator variability. Different people gate in different ways. There is also intra-operator variability. If you give the same person the same FCS files um, in different periods of time they might gate it differently. And finally there's variability in the different algorithms we use. Um, Flowsum, TSNI, UMAP, uh, phenograph, all of these algorithms have some sort of a random seed which means that if you run them multiple times you will get slightly different results and consolidating these results is non-trivial. So what about Astrolabe? Um, I've taken the same data and I have run it three times. We're going to call these experiments reproducibility A, B, and C. And um, each of these uh, experiments has nine samples, uh, three control samples and six uh, patient samples. And these come from Tordesillas et al. This is a peanut allergy, allergy study. So the controls are not peanut allergic and the patients are. Um, the experiment design is pretty complex. It involves uh, stimulation with uh, peanut extract. But I'm not showing this here. I want to focus on the phenotyping. And um, one of the tools by which Astrolabe helps us assess the phenotyping of an experiment is the cell subset navigator. This is a composite view of the entire experiment. It's a dimensional reduction view. So each of these bubbles is one of the cell subsets. So you can see we have different T cells, we have different NK cells, monocytes, B cells, and a large group of uh, granulocytes at the top. Neutrophils, uh, eosinophils, and basophils. And this is the MDS map. Uh, for uh, for the study for reproducibility A. Um, you can think about this as a spade plot or a flowsome tree or TSNI. Um, here is the MDS map for reproducibility B and here is the MDS map for reproducibility C. And I'm going to switch between them which is pretty boring. Uh, they're pretty much the same uh, because uh, the way Astrolabe works is we guarantee that if you run the same samples again and again you will get exactly the same results. And we do it through a combination of heuristics, through a combination of setting seeds, and um, through a combination of picking the right algorithms um, that are easier to control. And just to take this a step further, let's compare the uh, frequency of the different cell subsets between the um, patients and the controls. Um, so in this view, the uh, subsets are color-coded according to uh, patient versus control, the deeper the color, the greater the change. Let's move to reproducibility B and color code it. Let's move to reproducibility C and color code it. Exactly the same results. And then uh, let's pick the uh, neutrophil population and see how it changes. So I'm going to pick it across all the conditions. So this is A, this is B, this is C. There is no difference. Uh, because they're identical. In all three of them we see the exact same frequencies in each one of the samples. We see the same decrease between the controls and the patients. And we see the same phenotypes in the heat map. So um, again, a pretty boring video because nothing happens. And the take-home message here is if you are running a longitudinal study, if you are running a clinical trial, if you are acquiring your samples over a long period of time, if you have different operators um, acquiring the data or doing your analysis, um, I would encourage you to reach out to us at Astrolabe and uh, see whether our platform can work with your data. Because uh, the standardization that we bring to the table could be highly beneficial um, in the kind of studies that um, I portrayed. So with that, I will thank you for your time and uh, have a wonderful day.